What does OCD, fear of germs, and a spike have in common? Elle. Elle's life's a real bouncing act. She struggles to keep her life in perfect order. Let's see how long she goes before losing balance. Let's get right to the point with her secret. Elle looks around to see her apartment walls. The place is rented by her mother. She definitely couldn't afford it herself due to her unemployment status. Her cat lays at her feet because there's no comfortable beam of light to bask in. The lights are frequently low and the curtains often shut. Elle hates to see any dust particles fly around. She pulls her legs up and jumps off her seat. Elle's cat, Abba, startles awake with a mix between a meow and a yawn. Abba marches across the floor towards the food bowl for a snack. The constant meowing drones on until Elle scoops a small amount of cat food into the container. The cat reaches the food before the bowl touches the floor. Elle pulls her hand back to avoid the incoming teeth and claws. The bowl falls and food scatters. Bad, Elba, bad. You don't do that. Abba ignores her and rooms the floor for the food like a robotic vacuum. She stays back to look at the situation. The floors are a mess, but Abba would clean it anyways. But then, Alba will be eating dirty food. Elle grabs the dustpan and broom. Abba is swept away mid-meal so she could gather the food back. The dustpan empties the tainted meal into the dustbin to the disappointment of Abba. She hooks the broom back onto the wall before going to wash her hands. Elle turns the hot tap and waits for the temperature to adjust. Heat is sterile. It will clean any germs that might be on my hands. Abba jumps up onto the bathroom counter, looking thirsty. Elle elbows the cat aside from the hot faucet until Abba leaves. When she sees steam rise from the tap, she puts her hands under. The burning pain from the water scalds her hands. One. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Steven sits the top of the soap dispenser with her palm, covering the other in cleansing soap. She scrubs her hands together, making sure she gets them thoroughly clean. Each individual finger is covered in bubbles. Under the fingernail is clear, and the knuckles are now grime-free. Elle turns the hot tap off and makes the water icy cold. One, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. She finishes the biting cold rinse. Hopefully the two extremes will kill off different pathogens. Stevens dries her hands on a small fresh towel before immediately throwing it into the dirty washroom hamper. She holds her hands up like two tiny parallel tombstones. Her eyes go rapidly from one to the other before flipping the hands in 180 degrees. She notices the creases of her knuckles and in between her fingers. They are bleeding. She opens and clenches her hands to observe the wounds as they open and tighten. The pooling of blood unnerves her to no end and makes her only able to glance at them. Elle's hands are dried out, cracking and bloody from the obsessive treatment. She grabs her lotion and rubs it thoroughly into her hands. The white lotion appears pink. The lotion quickly absorbs and she quickly applies a second layer. After Elle completes her ritual, she walks down the hall. As she turns the corner, her phone falls out of her tiny, almost non-existent pocket. Darn. It lands right into Abba's litter box. She got her cat for emotional support, under the false idea that a cat would take care of itself and keep clean. Elle does little to look after the litter box, as she has difficulty taking care of herself. She leaves that job for her aging mother, who visits when she can. Ooh, it's disgusting! Elle reaches in to grab it. Her hand digs into the litter like sand. She feels the germs. They surround her submerging fist. Elle draws her hand back in disgust. It's burning! The areas of her skin that are dirty sting. The heat intensifies rapidly with no sign of recovery. The only solution to the pain is to cleanse the tainted flesh. She returns to her bathroom in a rush and purifies her hands. After the laborious procedure, she feels relief. Finally, being in a peaceful state of mind, she sits down on her chair. She stares forward and, for a moment, her mind is able to rest. 
Elle looks at the artwork hanging, a tranquil scene that makes her calm. She looks closely and notices that the left side is lower than the right. I can't believe how unbalanced it is. She goes to correct it. Stevens tilts the frame too far and needs to readjust it to be parallel with the horizon. She leaves and returns promptly with a level. She rests it atop the artwork. Elle exhales. What a relief. She places the level back into her neatly organized toolbox. As she walks into the room where her cat is, she bumps her arm on the edge of a table. She grunts in annoyance and bashes the other to make the injury even. Back when she was a student, she had to do the same thing except against the locker doors. Elle looks at the mess around her, festering trash bags wall to wall. She goes into the fetal position and panics at the sight. Elle covers her eyes and screams. When she looks around again, her house is as empty as it was prior. Thankfully, the mess wasn't real. Elle goes to her kitchen and opens the cupboards. Her dishes appear dirty to her. She gathers them and fills the sink. She makes sure to cleanse her hands before she even fills the sink with water. Elle scrubs the already spotless dishes and rinses them. She diligently dries the dishes. Elle then conducts her post-dishes hand wash before she can conclude the chore. She looks around for Abba and sees that her cat looks a paw. The cat continues and grooms the arm fur. Elle looks at the disorderly fur on her pet. It's uneven. I'll have to give you a brush. Come on, Elba. Let's get you looking pristine. She opens up a unit of drawers that holds all of her cat supplies, ranging from toys to food. She pulls open the middle one and takes out a small cat brush shaped like a fish. Elle takes her cat to the couch and sits Abba on her lap. She drags the brush across Abba's back, removing a clump of hair. Abba leaps off her owner and runs away. Don't go! I still need to brush you 15 more times. Elle looks at her clothes and couch to see that they are covered in cat hair. She looks towards her cat. She goes and puts the brush back in the proper drawer. Elle searches a compartment where her lint roller is. She takes it out and applies it to her clothes until they are spotless. Elle does the same to her couch. While she's there, she sorts out the area by fluffing the various throw pillows and resets them to be spacing out fairly. Elle finishes tidying the area, then she goes towards Abba. She looks in her hand at the lint roller, then she stares at her cat and gets a great idea. You won't be shedding much after this. Her cat backs up into a corner with no escape. Elle holds out the lint roller, almost able to run it across the cat's fur. Abba growls and slashes at her with its claws. Elle drops the lint roller and Abba runs away. Elle stares at the scrapes and holes in her arm left from the strike. Thin lines of blood pool out of the cuts. Her hands shake uncontrollably because of the sight of the blood. Elle goes to the bathroom door but can't open it. Her fingers are too numb to use. Elle's hands stiffen to the point that she can't open or close them anymore. She presses her palm on the doorknob and rotates it open. Elle rinses the blood while looking away. She briefly glances back several times. When most of the blood is gone, she dries her hands on a towel by dabbing her hands dry. Steven sees the bright stains on her white towel and throws it in the hamper with a scream. She leaves the bathroom, but leaves the door open for ease of access. Elle looks at her arm's scratch marks. She goes and takes out a sewing kit. Lifting a sewing needle, she decides that she will have to replicate the scratches to mirror. She closes her eyes. With her hand, she feels where each one is before stabbing and scratching her other arm. She opens her eyes for a moment. It's horrible! It's worse than I thought! She sees not only the awful blood, but that she's done it incorrectly. Meaning that not only will she have to start over, but she will have to injure both arms more to make any new markings pair up. This time, she decides to look more closely to prevent errors. She looks at her arms and immediately drops the needle. Her fingers stiffen and become unable to use. She pinches the needle between her fingers. Elle gets up to rinse the needle and her hands free of the blood. 
Each time she takes her arms out of the sink, the blood returns. She sets the needle aside and tries to wash her hands more thoroughly, but there seems to be little use at this point. The blood reminds her of a traumatic experience she had at her old home. Her mother had an immense amount of clutter that included a spike. One day, Elle had enough of the mess and wanted to clean it for good. It didn't take long for her to step onto the spike and impale her left foot. Ever since, the sight of blood has the potential to trigger the feeling of a phantom injury. Last time, her mother came here and she felt sentimental. Trying to complement her daughter's strength, but failing, she brought the spike as a gift to Elle. Elle leaves it in the back of her toolbox to limit her exposure to it. Elle's left foot hurts. She feels a spike in her left foot and immediately puts the pressure on her right. She limps to the nearest seat she has so she can wait until she can recover. The feeling in her foot worsens. What makes it even worse for her is that the feeling is uneven. She hops to where her toolbox is. She grabs the hammer and the large spike. Elle hops and jumps onto her couch. She needs to be off her foot before the hemophobia worsens. But she also can't bear the unbalanced sensation. It just needs to match. She holds the large nail to her right foot. Elle lines the hammer up and swings as hard as she can down onto the back of the spike. It drives into the bottom of her foot. She screams in agony as she constantly strikes it farther into her soul. When she finishes, she lies back and stares at herself in horror, but by now she lacks the strength. The blood pools at her feet, and she locks her gaze on the large puddle. The amount she observes is finally too much for her to behold. Elle becomes hysterical, laughing while she cries. The nail sticks out of her foot as she kicks her legs in anguish. Elle becomes lightheaded and dizzy. Her legs and hands go completely numb. Fearing the situation, she allows herself to lull off and faints away. The only thing Elle left unbalanced was her mental state. There's not much dirt on her. I will show you the item for tomorrow. You can learn the meat of this story next time. <laughs>